Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video we're going to do a complete drum overhaul on my brother's 1993 Ford F-350 named Ty. Has drums in the back. We're going to completely gut them, rebuild them, put new drums in, take care of the brakes. Whole nine yards. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, where we have started is taking the wheel off. I mean, we douse all this with PB because I don't think this wheel has been off in a very long time. Uh, I su suggest an impact driver for you, and at least in our application, these are 22 millimeters on the lug nuts. So I got one more to do, then we'll get the tire off. So here is the drum. Here's what it looks like. These drums are fairly large because this is meant for big towing and uh, big carrying. Um, it's just sitting on here, but normally, even when drums are working correctly, it's a little bit of a fight to get the drum off. And you tap it with a hammer all the way around. And we suspect that either this one or his buddy on the other side, the pad is stuck to the drum, which, shoes. correct rather correct me and with drums they are break shoes not break pads but we're pretty sure that there is a shoe that is stuck to the drum on this side or the other side which means it's going to make it that much more challenging to try to slide this off so we're going to go get our three pound hammer and some earmuffs and then let my brother go to town and i'll film and we'll see what we get all right we're filming from back here because my brother's being a little bit of a wild man with the hammer now, Alright, so we were really aggressive on this because um, we were totally okay with destroying the drum because we have new ones. But if you are wanting to reuse your drum, you got to be a bit more gentle with the hammer. Now one thing this tells us, if you look at this shoe, is that there is no shoe. This is the metal backing plate, and on both sides, she was gone. There is no, the only braking power back here is when you get metal on metal. So, yeah, this this was heavily neglected, and that would explain why we were having braking failures. And getting in and looking a little closer, this wheel cylinder, the dust boot is gone. So, this one was probably dragging or not grabbing at all. And I'm sure the other side is going to be just as fun. So the next step after this is you got to start disassembling all your springs and whatnot. But before you do that, before you go any further, clean this up and take good pictures. Because there's a bunch of springs and drums and they have to go in a certain order. And if they don't go back right, they don't work. So. Clean it up, take good pictures before you go any further and start disassembly. Alright, so we are trying to figure out which shoe goes where. Normally you can tell because when you look at the top of a shoe, uh, one shoe will start one hole down and then the other shoe will start right at the end of the metal. But in our case, because the shoes are totally gone, we can't do that. But what I did notice is the rear has a rivet at the bottom to hold a spring and I, what looks like the adjuster assembly. So that's how we know that this is a rear. But you got to look at it a little further because if you look here in the existing setup, that's the end of the rivet, not the head. It's this part right here. So that means that the rears are also sided. So what I have in my hand is actually the passenger rear. And 
what my brother has in his hand is the driver rear and we're on the driver's side so that's a way you can tell your fronts and your backs if you have no pad left to do reference marks with thought i would share all right guys i'm going to go ahead and pull the brake line off here and you got to be real gentle because these can get kind of crusty that's a 7 16th so i'm going to grab my 7 16th flare start rocking it break it loose make sure it doesn't twist the line off we're not removing the wheel cylinder yet because we want to disassemble it on the front side before we pull it. So away we go. Alrighty guys, what I wanted to show you here is we're going to remove the parking brake lever. But to do that, uh, essentially it's this assembly right up over here at the top. And there is a nut. It needs to get out of the way so I can get to this wheel cylinder. Yeah, and there's a nut me around here right up there in the backing plate I think it's a 7 16 and you're definitely gonna need a socket so I'm gonna go after it and see if I can't get it loose all right so we did get it out but it, uh, it kind of rust welded as you can see the threads got banged up so we had to take a screwdriver and stick it right in here or yeah like right in there and put a lot of pressure on it just so we could finish getting this out. But it is a 7 16 does need to come out, so we've got it out. I'm going to do the more detailed filming of where all the springs and things go as we put it back together. I think that would be more useful. Okay, so working on the wheel cylinder, uh, there are two bolts. They are one half, so I'm going to get those out. and. As a reminder, the wheel cylinders are sided. They're not symmetrical, so there is a left and there is a right. A driver and passenger. So when you go to install your new one, do pay attention to that. One other thing I wanted to show is there was a little bit of pre-assembly that needed to happen on these shoes. On the rear shoe, you have to take this, this kind of half moon shaped thing and you have to put it in position and then there's two tabs you have to bend over so that it will not move so don't forget to do that before you get all excited and put your shoes on and then go why isn't this working well because you forgot to do this so keep that in mind as you do prep for your shoes so the first part of the rebuild is get the wheel cylinder back in Make sure you've got the right one for the side you're working on. Just take those one halves, get them finger tight, bring them in, make sure you're aligned correctly. And then I made them snug, but I didn't kill them. And then after that, you got to start rebuilding the whole parking brake arm and all the stuff that's tied up at the top where that 7 16 bolt was, which is right up there. I don't know if you can see it with the camera. One other thing to note is you probably want to throw some grease where things move or where they touch. So you'll notice basically anywhere you see kind of a checkered pattern on the backing plate, you can put a little blob of grease and put some grease where the piston arms are are going to be on the wheel cylinder. And this is just multi-purpose grease, nothing fancy. That's what I put in my grease gun to lube everything. Okay, so as you are preparing to put everything back together, in order to make sure the drum fit back over your shoes, one thing that you may need to do is actually crack the bleeder on the back of the wheel cylinder so you can push the cylinder pistons in a bit to make sure they're not pushing out against the shoes and making the total... I guess in this case it would be circumference to be greater than what the drums can contain. Another thing to check and make sure about is when you put your parking brake assembly back together, make sure the parking brake is not pulled. And you'll be able to tell that because this metal tongue right next to my brother's finger there is going to be roughly center-ish when you put everything together. If it's cocked all the way over to one side and pushing a shoe out of the way, that means the parking brake is engaged and you are not going to be able to slide your drum on. 
The last thing that you do need to pay attention to, <clears throat> as far as making sure the drum's gonna fit on, is when you put your adjuster in, make sure it's pointing in the appropriate direction for this, the drum you're working on, whether it be passenger or driver, because they're opposite. That also is gonna affect the ability of the parking brake to actually adjust the shoes because the, the prawl won't line up with the adjuster, with the star wheel here, and then it won't work. So make sure you check those three things as you prepare to do your reassembly, get your shoes in, your springs in, and all that good stuff. So I went ahead and did that. And then over here, with some sweat equity and a screwdriver, my brother switched out this I think it's an adjuster arm. Yeah, park and brake adjuster. Yeah. Well, and park and brake arm, it's not really adjusting much. So he switched that out in order to pull the stack apart. He took a screwdriver to kind of work it loose because it was rust welded. All right, that's gonna have to come out. Come on. So he's working on that. I am changing out the soft line that feeds the rear axle because part of this project is we're placing any and all soft lines. So, this already, I've got both sides loose, but now i got to loosen up the bolt that's in the middle of the distribution block so that I can get this in free, and then i got to get the top free before I can finish switching it out. So I'll bring you back when we have more updates. Alright, so bringing you back, we put the nut on the back of the center post up top, so that's all done. Had to use some vice grips to keep it from spinning. And now we're trying to get the shoes back on, which is a little easier said than done. Got them both in. Now we're feeding the long green double spring. It's going to hook on the shoe. And these are not in the absolute correct position because you want them. Give you a hand. Where they're level. And this is the part where... You gotta get the pliers out. Men are men and... Yeah, pliers are necessary. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Quick little note here, there are brake drum specific pliers. I do not have any. You can get by with screwdrivers and locking pliers. But bear in mind, when you use tools off-brand, stuff can happen. So, if you feel the need, put on safety glasses, do whatever else you gotta do. Before you start dealing with things that have stored energy. Okay, so that's our first spring back in. And I'll bring you back as we get other components back on. Note that after getting that assembly in, that the tops of the shoes here, they, they kind of lock into place up here. Now, the problem you're going to see now is because the adjusters are not down here at the bottom, the shoes are going to try to collapse in on themselves. And it'll just be kind of annoying. So, got the adjuster in on front, just between the two shoes, so they'll stop trying to suck towards each other because of the big green spring. And we've got these hooks in, they look like they're a nail on one side. You feed them in through the back, we've got both of those installed. Sorry, there's a jack in the way. So, uh, there it is. And now, coming back around, um, you gotta take the hooks, and you hook a spring ah, onto them. I gotta put the camera down to provide a third hand. Alright guys, so this is how your final setup is going to look before you throw the drum on. As I mentioned earlier, the wheel cylinder has to go back in, then the parking brake assembly. You can feed the big green spring behind all that. It goes across. And then we're working down the side facing the back of the truck. We've got a red spring that hangs on the hook nail thing, and working your way down, 
you have to get the adjuster in. Notice that the adjuster wheel points to the right side instead of the left. And notice how the wheel lines up with this adjuster prawl. There is a spring that runs back here, up there. That spring has to go in before you bring down the actual adjuster cable, which is this guy right here. He goes this way, he goes around, little guide right there in the shoe, comes down, goes behind the hook, as you can see, comes down and then hooks into the adjuster pole. But that has to be undone so you can get that big long spring in there. And meanwhile, on the front side, facing the front of the truck, we've got another red spring and the color coding is important. Different spring colors have different strengths. And they may be shaped slightly different. And that's on another nail hook thing. And then there's the other side of the spring. And the direction of the spring is important too. So the springy side is on that side. And then the long metal hook part is on the back side. And this is going to be mirror image <coughs> on the driver's side. Everything will get flipped. As far as where the guide is, how the cable runs, the orientation of the springs, all that good stuff. So this is what it will look like before you slide your drum on. If you did everything right at this point and your parking brake is not engaged, the drum should slide on without issue. Okay, so first make sure your drum will actually slide on, which we did. And it's really important to note that there are different sizes of drums and brake shoes here. This is a semi-float axle, which is the one that went in the non-Super Duty F-250 of this era. It has a 2.5 inch brake shoe, and then a 3 inch friction surface. And that's very important, because otherwise the drums, most of the other ones you're going to see, are for the full float axle, which went in the Super Duty. If you're... If you put your drum on <clears throat> and it fits, but it only goes on to about there, you got the wrong drum. Yep. You have the three inch drum, not the two and a half. Ask me how I know. Well, the three and a half versus the three. But anyway, now that you know you've got it on there, the next thing you got to do is work on playing with the star adjuster at the bottom until. The drum is draggy on the brakes, but you can still spin it. That's going to get you pretty close to where your, the rear brakes are actually going to do something for you. And normally, you would use your parking brake to finish the adjustment out to where you need it to be. But the parking brake cables on this truck are shot, so we can't do that. So we'll get it reasonably close. You can manually adjust it by going in through the inspection port in the backing plate. That's at the bottom center of the plate where the star wheel is. And you can get it fairly close to where you need it to be. And once the parking brake cabling is fixed, all that will work like it's supposed to. Okay, one last thing guys. When you're finished with all your adjustments and you've bled everything, don't forget to put this inspection port cover in. This is how you manually adjust the drums if you don't want to take, or the brake shoes if you don't want to take the drum off. But you've got to put this cover in, otherwise it gets exposed to the environment, all sorts of junk gets in, stuff rust, and then your brakes go bad on you. So, very important that you put this in. Alright guys, that's going to do it for our brake drum remove and replace on my brother's 1993 Ford F-250. I consider this a completed repair. So, please leave a comment. I like to read them. I like to reply to them. I like to learn from them. Please also like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the fun YouTube stuff that helps grow the channel. And remember, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you guys next episode.